little bit about Toy Story there. Um, have you noticed in Pixar films, all the bad guys, uh, good guys even, are massive knobs? Like, look at Ratatouille. 50 people lost their job to rats. Like, they're not even especially good rats. They're just like one really good rat and a load of highly coordinated ones. Look at Bugs Life. Look at Bugs Life. Those ants and grasshoppers had a contractual agreement between them, didn't they? But no, the ants fuck up and suddenly it's the grasshopper's fault. You know, like, and suddenly at the end, they commit grasshopper genocide. Like, they start getting the main grasshopper and literally tear him limb from limb. <laughs> So, from one man with bloodlust to another, may I introduce to you, introduce to you Mrs. Stephen Catling! <laughs> Alright, Lancaster! Alright, so there's great south, north south divide in this country, right? Um, now, this was proven to me as I was in my younger teens. Me and my dad would often go down to London, and before we had arrived to London, he said, Stephen, um, as a northerner, you shouldn't talk to southerners, because, you know, they, they think we're Vikings. <laughs> as we went down the Thames in a long boat. <laughs> um, of course, we arrived with um, a lot of problems as we got there. We got lost and people started running away. I mean, don't they know, Londoners, that when Northerners get angry that we um, go berserk and start gnawing at the lampposts? <laughs> uh, yeah. And then the police finally arrived when we start pillaging the British Museum. I mean, I can't see the complaint. I mean, that's how half the stuff got there in the first place. <laughs> Fucking hypocrites. Anyway, so we were finally arrested for murder, theft, and <laughs> smoking in a non smoking area. <laughs> or as they insisted, arson. <laughs> But yeah, we had more issues at court, and um, we finally taken, but we wouldn't take the oath, because, you know, there's only one monarch I'll bend my knee to, and that's... Odin! The King of Asgard! So anyway... <laughs> now, we all know the Vikings, they travelled up um, all of the Europe, um, the Mediterranean, Iceland, Greenland, even discovered America long before Columbus did. Ironically, I'm terrified of the ocean. I mean, there's plenty of things that can bite you, sting you, and plenty of I've seen enough hentai to know where this is going moments. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people have experience in the room. Um, for anyone who doesn't know what hentai is, um, that's Japanese cartoon porn that can and does involve tentacles. Um, but that's, that's, it makes the image of swimming in the ocean all the more terrifying as you're swimming from the depths of the abyss. Some tentacles are rising to drag you down, not to devour you, but to fuck you. <laughs> a fate worse than death. Jaws would also be a very different film. What's more scary, Jaws trying to bite your leg off or him getting creative with those dorsal fins? <laughs> But I do, I sort of wonder the origin of whether uh, Mr. and Mrs. Squid tired of ordinary si sex and, you know, decide to spice it up in the bedroom even though it's an ocean, so there's no beds. <laughs> you know, start introducing squirt and ink in each other's face and then a few late, later they start cracking out the whips, chains and dildos. Um, now, whips for squids, and, you know, there's no whips available, but tentacles will do fine. Um, Chains, there's plenty of um, wrecked ships that they can find them from. And dildos, well, there's not many in the ocean. I've tried to find some, but... <laughs> you know, it, it, the solution's actually just quite simple. Here, yeah, dolphin, dolphin, dolphin. Come here, come here. Yeah. Flipper was never the same after that. Time. How are you today, Flipper? <laughs> No, sex in, in the animal kingdom, I'm a biologist, and it's just fucking weird. It's just absolute batshit insane. I mean, there's a creature called uh, a nautilus, which is like a squid, but in a snail shell, that has the ability to detach its penis. And I thought, that actually quite, would be quite useful in um, people. Um, I mean, you know, you wake up in the morning with morning glory, and you're like, 
don't have time to masturbate, I've got to go to a tutorial. <laughs> And I don't want to look too eager to succeed. <laughs> so, you know, you get tired and you're like, oh, it's a bit stiff. Kind of W if you D40 will do this. Plonk. And you start walking out the door and the bloody thing starts following like, no, you can't stay here. I can't leave you about, have you, in fact, get in the box, get in the box. No, I can't have you loose. Last time you attacked the cleaning lady. <laughs> don't you dare pull that face on me. No, don't you dare try and take them on high ground. Don't stand against me. All right, that's it, in the box, go. <laughs> So, um, you know, you go out, do your tutorial, come back, and this time my um, penis is so, I opened the box, my penis was so happy to see me, it launched itself in my eye, I'm like, oh shit, my eye, I think there's blood coming out. <laughs> and that's why I need to wear glasses. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, sometimes between lectures, um, I'll go into Blackwell's, and we'll look in the, my friends will look in the philosophy section. There's a series called popular culture and philosophy, comparing things like Game of Thrones, Big Bang, Simpsons, and the relationship to philosophy. My friend one day picked this one, Twilight Philosophy, and opened the book and said, Edward Cullen would make a good boyfriend for your daughter. <laughs> Bullshit! <laughs> for starters, I don't think I have a daughter. <laughs> Being a virgin might strengthen this claim. <laughs> Secondly, stalking isn't romantic. If a guy is sitting in a tree all night watching you sleep, the correct response to say, oh how romantic, let me live with you forever, is to get pepper spray and get a restraining order. <sighs> and lastly, he's a fucking vampire who wants to drink your blood and turn her in the undead. I am not having that. It's not happening on my watch. <laughs> but yeah, speaking of philosophy now, um, I often help my uh, flatmate with it, and he, um, you know, he often goes apeshit, and it's made me come to the conclusion that drugs and philosophy are quite similar. <laughs> I mean, there really should be like warning labels in it, like um, you know how on sno smoking packets, smoking, smoking packets. They have the um, warning, cancer kills, and the picture of a cancerous lung. Well, it should be like on the philosophy book, I don't know, Nietzsche on it. Um, no, on the Nietzsche's book, a picture of a man, you know, his eyes are doing his, his tongue coming out, he's got a beard and his hair's off, and fucking universe coming out of his fucking head. <laughs> <laughs> Warning, philosophy causes existential crisis, do handle with care. <laughs> or, um, you know, there should be an advert, um, picture the scene, man in dark silhouette, um, you know, he doesn't want to show his identity, like, well, it all started with Plato's Republic. <laughs> I, I then soon developed a thinking problem. <laughs> My wife left me because I, she didn't like it when I turned up late after spending a night in the library. <laughs> Then I lost my job because I came in late with the smell of doubt. <laughs> and then I was arrested for asking too many questions. <laughs> it's terrible. But you know, as one who engages in philosophy, you have to be careful, especially around your parents' house. You know, you'd be having a conversation with a friend about ethics or something. Um, anyway, and then yeah, next thing you know, mum's got a broom banging on the roof saying, dun, dun, dun. You're not talking about philosophy up there. No, Mum, we're doing LSD. <laughs> That's okay. Your grandparents are coming around. We need you in a good state. <laughs> or um, the moment when someone's coming through a deal and you're shoving a copy of Karl Marx down a bong, whipping out an opium pipe as your sister comes in and says, What are you doing? Leave me alone! Um, or, um, you know, there's always that terrible 
um, situation when your parents finally discover and like your dad comes up to you and says, So, I found a copy of Kant's critique of pure reason in your job. <laughs> I know you've been doing philosophy, don't lie to me. <laughs> Just tell me. I have been doing philosophy, Dad. <laughs> no! My only son! Why could he be snorting cocaine from a hawker's vagina? <laughs> Dad, there is no such thing as normal, it's merely a relative concept. <laughs> Don't say such things to me, son! You're dead to me! Look, you made your mother cry! <laughs> but yeah, you really have to be careful. I mean, you'd be walking down the high street and then, you know, like an idiot, you go down a dark alley and out of nowhere a man in a long trench coat like this um, <laughs> comes up to you saying, Oi, hey, you, I've got a gram of uh, Bertrand Russell on me. <laughs> no, child, quick, go away from me, strange man. And then he says, oh, I've got something better for you, I've got a bag of Voltaire. <laughs> no, no, no. of Aristotle, then you flip shit, punch the man, take his stash, overdose on philosophy. Next thing you know, two years later, you've woken up na in naked in India, and you've grown a beard, covered in ash, and built a fucking ashram around you. Anyways, <laughs> I've been Stephen Catling. Thank you. Good night. Uh, the drug cigarettes for all I care. Go get a Subway. It's delicious. Five pounds for uh, six, 12 inch. I don't know. I'm just making it up. Fuck it. Uh, we'll see you back in the same time about 15 minutes. And goodbye!